Hello, my dear students. So, welcome to Sankalp Learning Classes. In today's class, we are going to study about the Life Processes chapter. So, already we have completed the Life Processes chapter. In today's class, we are going to study about some important questions on this chapter. Okay. Yes, I hope everybody is ready to re listen the class. Yes, good evening. Okay. So, let us start the class with the first question. So, first I would like to discuss the MCQ questions. Okay. The first question is, my dear students, uh, take one notebook and pen. Note down the important question and important answers. Don't waste your time. Okay, note down the important points, everything. Okay, yes. In plants, the major function of xylem is the transportation of water, food, amino acids, option D, oxygen. You know that, what is the function of the xylem? Anybody, what is the function of the xylem? Is it transportation of the water, food, transportation of the food or transportation of the amino acid or oxygen? Yes, you know that xylem is that is helping for the transportation of the water, food and amino acids. So, so these are the, <clears throat> these are transported through the phloem, right? And oxygen that is exchanged through the stomata of the plant. So, option A, water is the correct answer. Second question, the blood vessels, read the question properly, the blood vessels that carry blood from all parts of the human body to the heart are, option A, arteries, Option B, capillaries. Option C, pulmonary arteries. Option D, veins. See here. The blood vessels that carry the blood from the parts, all parts of the human body to the heart. So, which are the blood, which blood vessels that are helpful for this? You know that the blood vessels that helpful, that are helpful for the carrying the blood, all the parts of the body to the heart that are that is nothing arteries they are not arteries capillaries so that is not a correct option pulmonary arteries pulmonary arteries arteries mean for, for the carrying the blood from the heart to the different uh, parts of our body so illi arteries en madutte andre blood anna heart in the bare bare parts ge transport maadatthe alva uh, pulmonary arteries in maadatthe deoxygenated blood anna lungs ige carry maadatthe alva but here what is the question the blood vessels carry the blood from all the parts of the human body to the heart ella parts in the heart ige blood anna tegg kond baro enu anta alva so that is option D veins option D is the correct answer yes very good See the next question. Plants can get rid of excess of water by this process. Transpiration, photosynthesis, respiration, translocation. So plants lost their excess of water by this process. Is it transpiration, photosynthesis that is the production of the food in the plants that is not a correct answer respiration that is the exchange of the gases carbon dioxide and the oxygen that is not the correct answer translocation that is uh, related to the uh, transportation of the food right that is related to the phloem so that is not a correct answer correct answer is option a that is the transpiration yes See the question number 4. The site of complete digestion of carbohydrates, proteins and fats is stomach, large intestine, 
small intestine liver in the stomach there is a digestion of the protein takes place but only partial digestion of the protein takes place there is no digestion of the fat in the stomach and large intestine that absorb the some materials but there is no specialized digestion in the large intestine but small intestine so that helps for the complete digestion of the carbohydrates proteins and fats okay so liver that is releasing the bile juice and helpful for the digestion but there is no complete digestion in the liver so option c is the correct answer yes option c is the correct answer okay so these all questions are asked in the previous year question paper okay then to the question number 5 under what condition lactic acid is produced in the muscle cells anybody so this is a one mark question under what condition lactic acid is produced in the muscle cells yes anybody so here lactic acid is released in our muscle cells right lactic acid is released in our muscle cells and it is produced at what condition it is produced it is produced during the uh, when the oxygen is less when the in the absence of the oxygen in the absence of in the absence of oxygen in the absence of oxygen muscle cell produce the lactic acid okay so what you should write for one marks in the absence of oxygen okay so that is the correct answer next question eating chapati by chewing it very slowly it is sweeter why so when you eat the chapati by chewing it very slowly it tastes sweeter what is the reason because the food that get mixed with the water like substance what it is called saliva and this saliva that helps that contain the one enzyme that is called as a salivary amylase enzyme salivary amylase salivary amylase enzyme so this salivary amylase breaks down the carbohydrate this chapati contain the carbohydrate right this chapati contain the carbohydrate and this carbohydrate in the presence of the salivary amylase enzyme so that helps to break down the carbohydrate into a simple sugar simple sugar so it tastes sweeter so like that you should write the answer okay so that is also one marks question so you should mention the salivary amylase enzyme and what is the function of that enzyme salivary amylase enzyme i hope this is clear next question the rate of breathing in aquatic organisms is much faster than the seen in terrestrial organisms why so if you observe the aquatic organism organisms like fishes you can observe the faster respiration compared to the terrestrial organisms like human beings so what is the reason behind that anybody what is the reason behind that yes because 
aquatic organisms breathe faster than the terrestrial organisms what is the reason because there is less dissolved oxygen in water than in the air so water alli enagirutte oxygen dissolve agirodu kadme irutte compared to the air which is on the earth so uh, enu terrestrial organisms ge jaasti oxygen available irutte that is present in the air but the aquatic organisms they get the less oxygen dissolved in the water okay because of that reason they have the faster respiration okay Question number 8. Write any two difference between the aerobic respiration and the anaerobic respiration. Yes, what is the difference between the aerobic and the anaerobic respiration? You know the answer, aerobic respiration. So, that is in the presence of the oxygen, breakdown of the pyruvate molecule takes place, right? But anaerobic respiration means in the absence of the oxygen, the pyruvate molecule that breaks down into a, that breaks down and releases the energy. So, that is the main difference. But you have to write two difference between the aerobic and the anaerobic respiration. Okay. Yes. You can note down the answer also. Aerobic respiration in the presence of the oxygen, pyruvate converted into carbon dioxide, water and energy. Anaerobic respiration that takes place in the yeast, glucose converted into pyruvate that is same in the both respiration and in the absence of the oxygen, pyruvate converted into ethanol, carbon dioxide and energy. Okay. Here ethanol is released, but here only carbon dioxide, water and energy is released. More energy is released compared to the anaerobic respiration. In the aerobic respiration, there is more energy is released. But in case of the anaerobic respiration, there is less energy is released. So like that, you should write the <coughs> difference. And in the aerobic respiration, there is no ethanol production. But in the anaerobic respiration in the east, you can observe the production of the ethanol alva ethanol production agodana you note bodu so that is the difference see the next question compare the functions of xylem tissue with that the phloem tissue explain the process of exchange of gases that takes place through the stomata so this is the first question this is the Second question, okay. Compare the functions of xylem tissue with that of the phloem. So, you, should, you can write xylem and phloem in the separate column. Xylem and phloem and the xylem and phloem. So, you should compare. First, Xylem that helps for the transportation of the water and minerals. Phloem. So that helps for the transportation of the food material. Like amino acids. And many other things also. Food, mainly food material. And in the xylem. Only physical forces are used to transport the water from roots to the leaves. Physical passive transport also you can call. Some physical forces are used to transport the water. But in the xylem using ATP. ATP is means energy is used that is a 
active transport alva using atp transportation of the food takes place with the help of the atp and in the xylem what you can observe only one direction water is moving in the one direction from root to the leaves root in the leaves ke one directionally move agutte but in the ploium you can observe the movement of the food uh, translocation of the food in a both direction okay not only upward and downward both direction that you can observe okay so like that you should compare the function of the xylem and ploium i hope this is clear then second question is explain the process of exchange of gases that takes place through the stomata in plants how the exchange of the gases takes place in the stomata so during the day the plants take the carbon dioxide and release the oxygen you know that during the day time sunlight is more in the presence of the sunlight plants are able to perform the photosynthesis for the photosynthesis process carbon dioxide is needed and in the photosynthesis process oxygen is released so oxygen is removed from the plants body through the stomata and respiration at night plants take in the oxygen so plants also respire you know that they will also take the oxygen and release the carbon dioxide through the stomata so like this stomata are helpful for the exchange of the gases see the 10th question how is the structure of human heart supportive in transporting the oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood you know that in the human body oxygenated blood is circulating separately and deoxygenated blood circulating separately but there is no mixing of the both blood right <clears throat> so how it takes place how human heart is support you to keep the separate oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood so that we have to explain okay so this is also applied question okay so many students are asking for the ma'am please discuss the applied question so this is also type of the applied question just see the answer <clears throat> septum so in between the left and right part of the heart you can observe the septum so that partition called a septum separates the hearts left and right sides so that is a that is helpful for both separation of the left and right part of the uh, heart and both atria and ventricles are separated here and valves valves are present in between the atria and ventricle these valves so that is also helping for the separate movement of the blood and chambers so these four chambers so atria upper chambers are called atria and lower chambers are called ventricle upper atria and lower ventricles so they receives the oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood separately upper part of the heart they receives the uh, both blood separately and they transport the both blood separately like this our heart is designed to carry the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood separately second question is see the this question in humans how is the digested food absorbed by the blood mention the functions of blood in the transporting the necessary materials okay in human beings how the digested food in the small intestine complete digestion of the food takes place right the walls of the small intestine they have the specialized structure called as villi using that specialized structure villi the food materials they will absorbed and transported to the blood right mention the function of blood in the transporting of the necessary materials how the 
necessary materials like food and uh, other materials are transported. You can observe plasma. So that carries the carbon dioxide, food, water and some nitrogenous waste. In the blood, plasma carries the carbon dioxide, mainly food, water and some nitrogenous waste. And RBC that helps for the transportation of the oxygen. So like this, the blood is helping for the transportation of the necessary materials. Observe the given below figures. Which figure indicates the massive amount of the exchange of the gases Y? Name the parts X and Y. What is the function of part X? Okay. See here. Here figure 1 and figure 2 are given here. You can observe this is the structure of the stomata. Right. Here you can observe the open stomata. And this is the closed stomata. And here. Two questions are asked based on this question, based on these figures. Which figure indicate the massive amount of exchange of gases? Here, which figure indicate where the more amount of the exchange of the gases takes place? That is in the open stomata, right? In the figure, in the open stomata. In the figure 1, you can observe the massive exchange of the gases. Why? Because this is open stomata. You can observe the stomatal pore here. Alva, stomatal pore in agide, large agi, open agide, alva. Because of that reason, there is a massive exchange of the gases. Then, name the parts X. What is X here? So, this is X and this is Y. Name the X. Yes. Here. Yes. Many students are writing the answer. That is X is. That is guard cell. X is nothing but guard cell. And Y is nothing but stomatal pore. Stomatal pore. And here, what is the function of the X? So, that also you should write. What is the function of this guard cell? This guard cell that are helpful for the opening and closing of the stomata. See here, here, see the structure of the, just observe the structure of the uh, guard cells here and here. So, they are helping for the opening and closing of the stomata. That is the function of the guard cell. Okay. Explain the digestion of food, food materials in stomach and small intestine. So, you know the answer for this question. In the stomach, how the digestion takes place? In the stomach, gastric glands that you have to mention, gastric glands. So, what are the important points you have to mention in your answer? So, that I am uh, explaining gastric glands. And these gastric glands, they are releasing the pepsin, HCl and mucus. This HCl provide the acidic medium for the pepsin. So that pepsin acts on the protein. The partial digestion of the protein takes place with the help of the pepsin and mucus prevents the walls of the stomach from the acid. So only this much you have to mention. That is the digestion in the stomach. So which glands they are helping for the release of the chemicals and which are the chemicals and what is the function of that chemicals that you have to mention. So that completes the digestion in the stomach. And digestion in the small intestine. Digestion in the small intestine. First, the small intestine receives the bile juice. Bile juice from the liver. 
so that help for the digestion of the fat alva so large globules of the fat large globules of the fats they convert into small globules small globules then pancreatic juice pancreatic juice contain the trypsin enzyme that acts on the protein and lipase that help for the di further digestion of the fat okay so like that these pancreatic juice also create the alkaline uh, creates the food alkaline because in the stomach the food be food become acidic right so when it enters to the intestine so these enzymes acts so when the food is alkaline so this pancreatic juice that is helpful for the uh, making the food alkaline then at last intestinal juice intestinal juice that contains the enzymes and finally that convert the carbohydrate into what then proteins into what and fats into what so that you can write can you write that in the intestine how the complex food is converted into simpler forms yes at last yes okay i hope you know the answer in the class also i have explained that okay so write down the answer in the chat box see the 13th question explain the role of xylem and phloem tissues in the transportation of the materials in plants you know that xylem is meant for the transportation of the water and phloem that is meant for the transportation of the food materials right water and here phloem that is for the food materials how the xylem is helping for the transportation of the water xylem that carries the water from the root to the leaves through the xylem cells like xylem vessels and tracheids and phloem so that help for the transportation of the photosynthesis food material which is prepared in the photosynthesis and that is by using the atp so like that you have to explain this explain the stages of double circulation of the blood in humans so what is what is the meaning of double circulation so this is very very important question what is double circulation explain the double circulation that is very important question see here double circulation means first what happens oxygen rich blood oxygen rich blood that enters into the left atria when it relaxes okay then through the pulmonary veins when the atrium contracts the oxygenated blood moves to the left ventricle when ventricle contracts the oxygenated blood that moves into the aorta and all the parts of the body then the right atrium the right part of the heart the atrium that receives the deoxygenated blood from all the parts of the body carried by vena cava upper and lower vena cava when it contracts it releases the blood to the ventricle ventricle is at the position of relaxation then when the ventricles receives the deoxygenated blood ventricles contract that right ventricle contract and the deoxygenated blood moves into the pulmonary arteries pulmonary arteries through the lungs okay through the to the lungs for the purification 
for the uh, oxygenation of the blood so it carries the carried by the pulmonary arteries to the lungs so like this this is nothing but a double circulation for one complete cycle there is two times blood is moving inside the heart so oxygenated blood is moving separately and deoxygenated blood is moving separately so like this is called as a double circulation and dear students uh, many students ask that uh, that is um, deoxygenated blood is in blue color no just it is a visual representation okay so to understand easily so it is given in the blue color and oxygenated blood given in the red color always blood will be in the red color only red color alle irutte deoxygenated andre blue color alli irodilla just nimge artha agli anta ee color alli kottirodu ashte okay yes this is what the double circulation okay is the 15th question mention the events that occur during the photosynthesis in plants and what are the methods used by the plants get rid of the excretory products so here mention the events that occur during the photosynthesis there are three main events in the photosynthesis right so that you have to mention and what are the methods used by the plants to get rid of its excretory products how they are able to remove their excretory products first thing is these are the three steps that occur during the photosynthesis absorption of light energy by chlorophyll conversion of light energy to the chemical energy and splitting of water water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates so this is the process then second thing is how plants are able to remove their waste products so that also we have studied in the last class in plants gaseous waste like carbon dioxide and oxygen so listen during the photosynthesis oxygen is the waste product for the plants and during the respiration carbon dioxide is the waste product okay so that is exchanged through the stomata and excess of water that is removed through the stomata through the uh transpiration process then some waste products are stored in the leaves and they fall off and some are located inside the vacuoles also and other waste products some waste products are in the form of resins and gums in the old xylem and some waste products that are excreted through the to the soil okay so like this these all methods you should write that is very important so these all questions are asked in the different question paper okay so that is why i am giving i am discussing this all questions here give reason first one is ventricles of human heart have thick wall second one it is necessary to separate oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in mammals and birds so first one why ventricles have thicker thicker wall than the atria what is the reason behind this because ventricles of the heart have thicker walls because they pump the blood out of the heart to the different organs with high pressure you know that ventricles they pump the blood to the different organs with the high pressure because of that to tolerate that they have the thicker wall but atria they are not pumping the blood just they are pouring the blood to the ventricle they just pass the blood to the ventricles because of that reason ventricles have the thick walls and second question is what is the second question give reason it is necessary to separate the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in mammals and birds because what is the reason so it allows separation separate carrying of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood allows 
efficient supply of the oxygen more oxygen is supplied to their cells and these animals they maintain their body temperature to maintain their body temperature high energy is needed okay so because of that reason there is a necessity of separation of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood separately basically in mammals and birds so like this you should write the answer next question which molecule is formed during the first step of cellular respiration by the breakdown of glucose molecule in the cytoplasm mention the types of respiration and write any two difference between them here which molecule is formed during the first step of the cellular respiration you know that glucose in the first step glucose that is having the six carbon molecules converted into pyruvate that is the first step pyruvate that is having the three carbon molecules two pyruvate molecules are formed and mention the types of respiration what are the types of respiration what are the types of respiration yes very good aerobic and anaerobic respiration yes many students are writing the answer yes aerobic and anaerobic respiration already we have studied what is the difference between the aerobic and the anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration where the breakdown of the pyruvate molecules takes place in the presence of the oxygen in the anaerobic respiration in the absence of the oxygen breakdown of the pyruvate molecule takes place and in the aerobic respiration high energy is released compared to the anaerobic respiration okay so like that you can write the difference next question is how are the functions of arteries veins and capillaries are interrelated in the circulation of the blood so these arteries veins and capillaries so in the circulation of the blood so these all are interrelated how they are interrelated you know that arteries how they are helpful for the circulation of the blood and veins and capillaries <clears throat> arteries veins and capillaries they work together in the circulatory system so how they are work how they are working together to deliver the oxygen and nutrients to the body tissues and remove the waste products so here arteries have muscular walls and they carry the blood from the heart to the different organs they carry the blood from the heart to the different organs and veins veins mainly carry the deoxygenated not all the time there are there are pulmonary veins also there pulmonary veins carry the oxygenated blood these veins carry the blood how they are carrying the blood they are carrying the blood to the heart they are not carrying away from the heart they are carrying the blood to the heart and capillaries so these capillaries are helping for the reach the each and every cell and they release the uh, where where the releasing of the uh, oxygenated blood takes place and again this capillaries helpful for the removal of the carbon dioxide containing blood and they release into the veins like that these all are interconnected these arteries veins and capillaries they are interconnected next question which are the factors essential for the photosynthesis mention the events that occur 
during the process and represent this process by balanced chemical equation. So this question is also asked in the previous year question paper. Which are the factors essential for the photosynthesis? Please tell me the answer. Which are the factors essential for the photosynthesis? Yes. Which are the factors that are helping for, that are needed for the photosynthesis? Just write down your answer. That is sunlight. Sunlight. Carbon dioxide. Water and minerals. Then chlorophyll chlorophyll so these are the factors that are essential for the photosynthesis and light then carbon dioxide water chlorophyll then mention the events that occur during the photosynthesis process there are three steps that are already studied in the last question and represent this process by balanced chemical equation write down the balanced chemical equation of this photosynthesis yes please write down the balanced chemical equation so you need carbon dioxide and water in the presence of Sunlight and chlorophyll and chlorophyll. So they produce glucose that is C6H12O6 plus CO2 plus H2O. You should balance this. Balance smart boda. Yes, balance this reaction. Yes, 6CO2, 12H2O and C6H12O6, 6CO2. Yes. 6CO2 plus 12H2O. So that gives us to 2... Sorry, oxygen is released here. Oxygen 6O2 plus 6H2O. oxygen is released here so that is 6O2 yes very good many students are writing the answer very good so this is a very important equation okay practice this see the 20th question the body temperature of frogs and lizards depend on temperature in the environment. Justify. Just frogs and lizards. They are frogs are amphibians. Amphibians and lizards are they are reptiles. You know that these frogs and lizards, amphibians and reptiles, they are Cold blood organisms. They are cold blood organisms. Poikilotherms. Also it is called cold blood. You can remember this word also. And 
the body temperature of frogs and lizard depend on the temperature in the environment they adjust their body temperature with respect to the environment if the environment temperature decreases or increases their body temperature is also increases or decreases because they are called as cold blood organisms they are able to vary that body temperature okay yes so that is the correct answer yes see the next question explain the process of translocation of food materials in plants how the translocation of the food material takes place in the plants you know that translocation of the food material takes place through upwards and through downwards in both the direction and there is a usage of atp there is a simple physical forces are not used some atp is used to transport the translocate the food materials in the phloem so first in the first step what happens materials like sucrose is transferred into the phloem tissue using the energy from the atp sucrose is transferred inside the phloem using atp after that this increases the osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is increased inside the tissue and causing the water to move inside the that phloem so water moves from high pressure high osmotic towards the high osmotic pressure so water moves inside the phloem tissue and this helps for the transportation of the translocation of the food material from the high pressure area to the lower pressure area this pressure moves the material in the phloem to the tissues which have the low pressure and this allows the phloem to move the material according to the plant's need wherever the material food material is needed at that place it is transferred like that the food material is transported translocated in the plant next question explain the process of digestion in the small intestine so again it is a very important question already we discussed this uh, the digestion in the small intestine so my dear students digestion in the mouth how it takes place and digestion in the stomach and digestion in the small intestine so that is very very important there is no special uh, there is no digestion in the large intestine so that is not important just uh, it helps for the absorption of the water so these three are very important just make a note on this mouth stomach and the small intestine how the digestion takes place in these parts next question how does the transportation of the water takes place over the heights in a plant explain how the transportation of water takes place nimge gottide enagutte andre tumba height alli iruvanta plant anna nodirthira alva so how this transport of the water from the soil to the leaves of the plants how it takes place yes so this takes place with the help of the xylem first thing is how the water enter into the xylem water enter into the xylem cells and the force created inside the xylem that push the water towards the leaves and another thing is transpiration the water that loss through the leaves of the plants that creates the suction pressure so that uh creates the suction pressure and help for the absorption of the water more transpiration means that help for the uh, more absorption of the water so that transpiration pull that help for the transportation of the water in the uh, uh to reach the or the heights of the plants so you can mention both 
that how water enter into the xylem tissue after that how the transpiration is helping for the transportation of the water yes in the xylem tissue vessels and tracheids of the root stem sleeves are interconnected uh, the xylem uh, vessels tracheids roots are interconnected and they will form the conducting channel for the uh, water and when the water enter into the uh, cells and that water that moves with the help of the uh, force to the, towards the leaves so that is the first thing and another thing is the plant has if the plant has adequate supply of the water the water which is lost through the stomata replaced by the xylem vessels in the that is uh, the water is replaced by the xylem so enagutte transpiration enagutte alle enagutte water lost agutte through the leaves alva so our loss agira water enagutte matte absorption agodr mulaka enagutte water replace agutte so that is called as a suction force that creating the suction force in the xylem and evaporation of water molecules from the cells of the leaf creates the suction right so that that pulls the water from the xylem cells of the root so ee tara transportation agutte so that is very important question many times this question is asked so next part of this uh, chapter is important uh, point is diagrams so from this chapter many diagrams are asked in the previous year question paper so my dear students this is uh, very important thing that you should practice the diagrams okay so first diagram that is asked for four mark question as a four mark question draw the diagram showing the structure of human excretory system and label the ureter human excretory system diagram is very important practice that diagram so here you should write the you should draw the diagram human excretory system and mention the ureter so they ask to mention this part you should mention all the parts that is good you should mention the left kidney right kidney and renal vein vein urethra urinary bladder everything you should mention in this okay so practice this daily and one more question is draw the diagram showing the sectional view of the human heart label the following parts you should label that compulsorily you should label this part remaining parts also you should uh, label aorta chamber of the heart that receives the deoxygenated blood which part of the heart that receives the deoxygenated blood that you have to mention here which part receives the deoxygenated blood the right atrium and the right ventricle they receives the deoxygenated blood this diagram is very important in many question paper this question is asked to draw the schematic representation of the human heart okay next question is draw the diagram showing the structure of nephron and label the glomerulus nephron diagram is also very important so like this you should draw the nephron practice these all diagrams so here i only mention which is asked in the previous year question papers okay but apart from these diagrams you should also practice the uh, some other diagrams also from this chapter that is fourth important diagram is that is open and open and closed open and closed stomata that is also very important diagram okay yes 
i hope this session is useful for you people and if you have any doubts you can write it down in the comment box and i will try to answer in the next session okay so if you have any doubts you can write in the chat box any doubts Yes, thank you students. We'll meet in the next session.